everybody, and welcome to another bonus interview episode of Horror Movie Night Podcast. This week, I am sitting down with three of the stars of the upcoming Netflix release. It's dropping at midnight tomorrow, Babysitter, Killer Queen. I've got Ken Marina, Jesus Christ, Ken Marino, Hannah Mae Lee, and Chris Wilde. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on this little interview conference call. I honestly oh, yeah. thought you had. I, I honestly thought you had Ken Marina and Jesus Christ. And when you said I know, Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, I was like, this one. That's I'm, awesome. I'm all in. What does Jesus have to say about this? Movie? <laughs> have you guys? Have you guys been to the Dolphin Tank at the Ken Marina? It is fantastic. <laughs> uh, We're so, here. We did it. We did it. We did it, guys. So I do, right out the gate, obviously we're a horror podcast. I'm a huge fan of the original Babysitter. I loved everything that was and that it leaned really hard into the comedy, but still found a nice balance with the horror. And all of you have comedic backgrounds, but I wasn't sure how deep into horror fandom you three are. Horror is my favorite fucking genre. I love horror. <laughs> I used to watch horror movies when I was like seven. My parents would just leave me home alone and I'd just take all my dolls with me and watch like Freddy Cougar because I was a freak. But then I couldn't go to sleep because I thought there'd be like chopped up body parts under my bed. You guys too? You guys feel this or no? It's just 100%. Like, I'm feeling I was it. outside the <laughs> window, Hannah. I was outside the window when you were watching those movies. <laughs> uh, I, when I was a kid, I... I had a monster squad. I, I uh, oh. Ben James, Teddy Bartoshevitz, and I, I think James Ray, we were all part of the monster squad, and we loved horror movies, and I am so thrilled to be in a successful horror franchise. Of, yes. Of <laughs> I was going to say, how, ex- yeah. the dream. how exciting was it to find out that there was going to be a sequel to this? I mean, it was, it, was, <laughs> that, it, was, it was super exciting. It was super exciting, especially especially when we especially when we heard we were we were in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we did the first one, there was a table read at McGee's house, and he kind of threw like a party, and we all did the table read, and it was excellent to like hang out and start building the chemistry with our castmates. Hannah and I have known each other a long time. Ken Marino and I have known each other a long time as well. So it was always good to see them. But when McGee sat down at the table read, he said, what if Quentin Tarantino directed Home Alone meets Die Hard? And we all were like, yeah, let's do it. And so the fact that that spun into this is fantastic. I think this is definitely one of the better sequels let alone horror genre sequels that you're going to find out there it's great and i loved all the terminator jokes especially since she <laughs> directed a terminator sequel i thought this movie kicks ass <laughs> yeah the the premise of the sequel actually because i feel like if you're a horror fan you know that like one of two things happen and the sequel either picks up where the original left off and it's a continuation of the story or it's just a whole group of other fucking people and there's like you're kind of disconnected. So, like, the fact that this actually just, like, picks up and it's a continuation of the story and, you know, you spend a whole movie making us love and then also love to hate so many of these characters that, like, the fact mm-hmm. that we're getting to experience that further instead of it just being a whole new story, like, a whole new group is so cool. Yeah, I like that, too. And I like that in this one we get to see a lot more of Ken and Chris together. See what that's like. What's that dynamic like? It's yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to drop too many spoilers, but <laughs> I just, I just signed on for Babysitter One, Two, Three. So that is oh. going to come to Netflix coming twenty twenty two. Fuck yeah! <laughs> I mean, that's big or news Ken for Marino Chris. Ken is the babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Marino is the babysitter. Yeah, Ken, Ken is the babysitter in the third one. <laughs> Ken Marie, <laughs> dad joke. <laughs> Babysitter, dad joke. That's right. Now, you guys, obviously, this movie's coming at what one could say a perfect time uh, for a horror movie to drop just before October when everyone still should be staying indoors watching television. But has that changed right. a little bit of the the ability to really promote and do? Like, obviously, I, I assume you weren't able to do any big like premiere like you would with a normal movie how has the climate of everything kind of changed 
this from your guys perspective as as promoters and actors and and i mean it's, it's you know for obvious reasons we're not allowed to go out there's no premieres we can't you know can't do any of that stuff but you know it's 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 nice to get on these calls and 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 you know pump up the movie and talk about our experiences because we're super proud of it it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy fun ridiculous gory hysterical kind of movie uh, to be part of so you know it, it, it would have been nice to see uh, Hannah and Chris at a, at a real premiere but um, just to hear their voices makes me uh, all warm and fuzzy <laughs> yeah I, I'm so I'm so happy that we get to <coughs> help people kind of deal with still being locked down six uh, 666 years later after the birth of COVID-19 <laughs> in the year, I believe, 1919, it feels like at this point. But I, I am so happy that we get to give people new content to chew on to help them get, you know, to help them with their day and their and their lockdown experience. So, yeah, you know, it sucks that we don't get to go to a premiere and have a big party, but I am also really thrilled with the timing of this that we get to help people out and get, you know, let, let people laugh and kind of forget about their problems for, I believe the runtime is 136 minutes. No, that's not, that's too long. <laughs> <laughs> 96 you minutes, know, I don't know. Anyway. Actually, I will say I'm a little bummed that I, because uh, I was looking forward to meeting Jesus Christ at the premiere, but um, <laughs> unfortunately that's not going to, he's booked, yeah, he's not He's available. booked up. Got a lot of saving to do. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's good that we didn't do like a contagion, like third trilogy for this guy. You know, so that I mean, that's a spoiler giveaway. There's no like airborne. There's no COVID. Sickness. There's no COVID nineteen. <laughs> there's no COVID nineteen in Babysitter Two. There isn't. So that's <laughs> good. No, there is not. Oh, and there's, there's, some, there's some topical jokes that keep your ears uh, perked up for a Joe Exotic joke. I don't know how the hell they got that in there. <laughs> I have no idea how Leslie Bibb was able to make a Joe Exotic joke, but she did, folks. She did. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. That was really soon, or like, soon to when it released. I know. We're, we're really good. <laughs> You know, we're joking about, like, thank God it's not a Contagion film, but, like, honestly, yes, thank God it's not, like, at this time, seeing, when I saw that that was on the coming up soon list, that we were getting the Babysitter sequel, it was, like, such a sigh of relief of, like, I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy a really gory, really funny, action-packed movie, like, that, and that's... All I want right now for that escape, I don't. Absolutely, man. I mean, absolutely. That's that's I, like I'm I'm so excited to watch it and just and like so when when a movie like that comes up where it's just like a fun, you know, over the top, crazy, uh, I, I, you know, when it's a horror comedy, like it's just a fun escape from the madness that is is our reality right now. And so, you know, I'm I. I, I I, I'm so excited that it's coming out. I'm so excited that people are going to get to kind of um, uh, escape with it for a couple hours. I wish you can all watch it together and like hear our reactions because there's a few scenes in there where I'm just like, what? It's <laughs> <laughs> like really like, what? Speaking of the chords, it's like, what? That's I know. Hilarious. When I when I watched it for the first time, there was literally moments where I I actually fell off the couch. Like I physically <laughs> fell off the couch, and then a couple of times when I got off the couch just to like do the oh what a feeling Toyota jump for joy because this movie. Wait, really were you in a Toyota jump for joy commercial, Chris? Uh, no, but <laughs> I did do a, a Toyota <laughs> Swagger Wagon commercial. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, this I like. When we made the first movie, we all knew it was good. Like, we, thought, like, we were like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be fun. But then when we went to that premiere and saw the finished product on the big screen, I think, I mean, I, I know I was absolutely blown away. I was like, wow, this, this is not just good. This is something special. And so when we all got back together to make the second one, I, we, we knew. We were like, here we go. We're going to have as much fun as humanly possible because McGee is the best guy for this job and so he knocked it out of the park and I think this movie you know for Hannah and Ken and myself we were just up to bat and McGee was just underhand lobbing these beautiful right down the middle pitches for us to knock out of the park I think the uh, people are going to love this 
the horror fans are going to be absolutely thrilled with this movie. They fucking better be. <laughs> kill them. We'll send <laughs> Hannah to kill you if you don't want this movie. <laughs> So, we, so as the VOD releases and things on streaming sites become more and more prevalent, obviously that builds up this also community that we didn't really have that much prior to social media of like live tweeting and watch parties and the memes and all the things that kind of build around it. Uh, were you guys, how do you react to that as it's happening? Because now it's not like you put a movie in theaters and you wait a couple weeks and see what the reaction is. You're pretty much getting instantaneous feedback from midnight tomorrow when this comes out. Is that a scary thought or is that an exciting, does that make it almost more exciting? Oh, I can't wait to see the what the fans create gif-wise. I cannot wait for the Babysitter Killer Queen gif to be created mm -hmm. by the fans. That is mm -hmm. going to be very exciting for me. There's something that hits your face, Chris, in one of the scenes that I was talking about, and I uh -huh. feel like that's going to be a major gif right there. <laughs> it's yeah. like, wow! Yeah. Uh, man, lots of fun gifts when these movies gifts, for sure. A lot of gifts. A lot of gifts. But I, I think I think I think it's exciting for the immediate reaction, like the, the the fact that it comes out, it drops, and then like people just start talking about it. I I I mean, I will admit that I immediately go to Twitter and just start like watching, you know, what people say about it, good, bad, whatever it is. It's just it's just fun to watch when like people are immediately kind of taking in the uh, the you know the work that we did, and it's. Um, it's exciting. It makes it, it makes it exciting. It's different. Yeah, and the, hor the horror fan community is so wonderful and so prevalent and are so vocal that when you, when you make them happy, they will let you know. And then at the same time, if you piss them off, they're going to let you know as well. So I think there's going to be some super happy people tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm going to be really pissed off. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I, hey, uh, Ken, you don't have Instagram, huh? You just have Twitter. I I'm, on I, I'm on Instagram, but I don't use it. Oh. I, I put one picture up many years ago, and then every once in a while, I look at people's stuff on Instagram, but I don't, I don't really use it. Are you guys TikToking? I love the TikTok. <laughs> I love the TikTok. No, I haven't. I am not signed up, but I watch TikTok videos. Are you, Chris W Wild S is your Instagram, right? Yeah, <laughs> Chris Wildest for TikTok. Twitter and Instagram and TikTok is literally other than movies is my second favorite form of entertainment right now. It's, it's, it has surpassed television. Number one <laughs> Wait, movie, this, number two is TikTok. All, is this all good for your interview? Oh, this is great because I'm going to, so Chris, are you, I'm going to just spin this. So Chris Wild wants... He wants the uh, third part of the Babysitter series to be released exclusively in minute-long TikToks. Is that what you're saying right yes, now? Yes, that's right. Minute-long, okay. minute-by-minute, Babysitter 3, part 1 through, and it'll be a 90-minute feature, so it'll be 90 parts. Make sure you watch them in order. <laughs> <laughs> And do not flip your phone sideways. It is meant to be enjoyed vertically. <laughs> and it's, mo it's, most, it's, it's mostly dancing. It's just dancing and lip syncing to oh, famous no, scenes from the Kardashians. It's mostly lip syncing and dancing. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so oh, before God. we wrap this up, I, I do want to ask one question directly to Ken, the infamous Ken Marina, a.k.a. Ken Marino. I... <laughs> In the horror world, there has been a rumor that has circulated for about 5, 10 to 15 years, I would say, and I need to know the answer. There is a rumor that the inspiration for Wet Hot American Summer stemmed from Sleepaway Camp, the movie. Is that true at all? You know, I don't know. I mean, I think I think it stemmed from all of those movies. I think Meatballs and Sleepaway Camp and all of those movies. I know my inspiration for my hair in that movie was from, I think it was from Meatballs. There's a character in Meatballs that has hair like that, but I think there's also a guy in Sleepaway Camp who has hair like that. So it may have, I, I may have mixed them up, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I have to believe that uh, there's some parts of it were inspired by Sleepaway Camp. 
the cl- those what of you American who- Summer is the best comedy of all time, Ken Marina. <laughs> no wonder they gave you your own ocean park <laughs> facility. <laughs> well, th- thank you again for your time. Everybody listening, <laughs> Babysitter Killer Queen dropping midnight tomorrow, September 10th. Do not miss out on it. It's going to be a blast. Make sure to live tweet it because Ken's going to be looking for the comments. And then just TikTok it for Chris. <laughs> and everyone yeah. will have a good time. <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network.